Okay, everybody. Hey, uh, just glad you could join us tonight. Uh, just kind of wanted to really discuss some stuff here. Um, really on the uh, the topic of tithing. And uh, I, I am just amazingly uh, sick at these folks throwing around names of of, of people that uh, they want you to respect when these guys are lying. They are telling a lie. All liars, the Bible says in my book, in Revelation says, all liars shall have their part in the lake, which burneth with fire and brimstone. Uh, these folks that talk about tithing and, and they want to twist the scripture, they want to bring in things and they want to act like that this is something that... Uh, you know they they're they're smooth they're they're smooth cats um and there is other other uh uh many others and I, you you can i'm not gonna i'm not gonna play these tonight i'm not gonna go into all these but i am going to uh kind of challenge the the fact that um uh, the leader of the upci david bernard talks about it and you can see him wiggling all around here he is nothing concrete about paying tithes he is assuming he's making assumptions that he himself in other areas of of belief in the scripture would tear you apart for making those same assumptions that he is making on tithing and I just want you to notice that. Um, but anyhow, I want to promote our, our next Sunday, uh, God willing, uh, uh, message, Death by a Thousand Cuts. Uh, we're going to be talking about Song of Solomon. Uh, we're going to be talking about those those little things that, that, that will lead you away from Jesus. And uh, holes in your cisterns. Um, when a lot of people are, are are going to church, they're they're getting getting things from what they think is from God, and they're they're coming back home, and and by Monday they're back in to watching porn, they're back into doing the things that they did before because there's no power in those things. They are not given to Jesus, but they've given themselves over to man, and man will never be able to do what the Holy Ghost, what God's Spirit can help you do that uh, they will lead you to that and we we're going to be talking about the seeds the sowing of the seeds and and we we got a little teaser out there talking about the the foul smell in your garden and uh stay tuned for that and i hope you guys uh those of you that that have been listening and i hope you uh share these messages with others we hope to help and uh anyhow let's 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 get people educated let's get people understanding that church is not salvation and most of these um, false prophets false preachers false deceiving liars are trying to deceive you they are smooth they have had years of experience with this they have had generations actually uh to to smooth over messages and and and, and bring in the right things they study for this they go to theology they go to to learn to preach and and, and they they will be able to to manipulate the truth of God's word into a lie. And, and and Jesus talked about it so much. And and I mentioned to you guys that, you know, Joyce Myers, you got uh uh what's what's his name? Uh the, the big preacher. Um I can't believe I I just f forgot about it. But many of these preachers, they they'll grab scriptures and they'll they'll bring talk about these scriptures, they'll quote scriptures, they'll leave out scriptures, and 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 they'll all to try to tell you about tithing and how oh God will bless you and and if you give God will give back and shake and full shake and and and, and multiply to you and 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 to give to you again and 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 they'll they'll tell you the stories about tithing and and you know how how uh Abraham gave to Melchizedek and and they'll 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 go to Malachi three eight ten they'll 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 tell you how you're robbing God. You know, these these liars 
are manipulating people. They know they're they're talking about oh well you know how I'll let I'll let Mr. Bernard uh, lie to you here a bit. Uh, so let's 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 go over there. I'm gonna I'm gonna play a little bit of this right now. Uh, just just watch this, and I'll, I'll make comments. People, not only giving in sacrifice and offerings from the very beginning, but having a specific system of tithing. Now in the New Testament, uh, there is no new system instituted. There's no statement that we're abolishing the 10%, now it's gonna be seven and a half percent or 15% or whatever you can do. In fact, Jesus just assumed people would continue to pay tithes. In Matthew 23, he talked. Now, isn't that funny? Now Jesus just assumed does that sound like Jesus to you? In any stretch of the imagination, would Jesus just assume? Now, now that that is that is a joke. That that really should be in the comedy club. That Jesus just assumed that you. And how do you know that, Mister Bernard? How do you know Jesus just assumed that? No, you're wrong, Mr. Bernard, because there is a new and living way. The old law is done away with. That's what the Bible says. That's scripture. You cannot get by with that. You cannot, that is a lie that you just said. Jesus assumed that that, that would just continue. No, Jesus said that's the end. It is finished. The old law is finished. Today, today. The old law is finished. You cannot assume, Mr. 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 Bernard, that Jesus did not assume. Jesus would not assume. You you can't just just say that. That is wrong. You're lying. That is a lie. You are manipulating truth. You are trying to make people believe something out of context just for your benefit and your organizational gain, for your paycheck, for your lifestyle, your livelihood, and all those that support you and you support them, mano a mano. Yes, that is exactly what you're doing there. The Jewish leaders, he said, you know, it's good that you pay tithes. You're, you're so uh, precise. You even pay tithes on the mint in your garden. So we would expect everybody if... Okay, that, <laughs> that is a lie. Jesus did not say you're so precise that you even paid tithes on the mint in your garden. He said nothing about a garden. <laughs> he was talking about herbs, okay? He did not specify a garden. And, and he, he, they are so precise. He did not say anything about precise. He was talking about they did these things. Now we know that just because Jesus spoke about something didn't mean that he condoned it. We He didn't approve it. That did not mean that. Mr. Bernard is assuming a whole lot of things here for a man of his stature and at his level and an organization that claims truth. So this None of this, none of these arguments, none of these these uh, statements Mr. Bernard is saying here would ever hold up scrutiny against anything that he in these other areas believes. So he's just pulling the wool over somebody's eyes, everybody if he can. He's being a wolf in sheep's clothing. He is mad at this. He is mad. He is out of his mind to set here a man of his stature to continually talk this garbage. This man, I truly believe, knows that the law is ended. I truly believe this man is knowledgeable enough to know that he is lying to people, that this organization is false, and they are making every bit of, of advantage of people that they can muster out. That's what I feel that this man is doing. That is not the Holy Ghost. That man is not portraying love for people. He is after benefit. He is after a benefactor. He is after lifting this organization and man's kingdom. Let's go on a little bit. Farmer, and you raise wheat, and you gather in the harvest, then you should pay tithes on all your wheat. 
but many people might think, well, I'm growing a few um, little, I have, you know, I have a little vegetable garden. Okay, I'll pay tithes on my vegetables, but I'm growing some mint for, you know, flavor for my food. So very few people would think, well, if I pick off 10 leaves of the mint, I should set aside one, and give it to, to the priest or something. Most people would even think that. But Jesus told these religious leaders, you are so meticulous about keeping the law that you even pay tithes of the mint in your garden. Now, Jesus didn't say how ridiculous. He said, you should do that. But another lie, Jesus did not say you should do that. Who was he talking to? He was talking about the law, performing the law. He was talking about them obeying the law in general. You do these things, but you're missing the spirit of love is exactly what Jesus was speaking to the scribes and, and the Pharisees about. He was not focusing on tithes as Mr. Bernard tries to make you believe, and he's reaching as far as he can to try and make you feel that it's all about tithes here, and this is the uh, of the the accepting of Jesus to move ties on through over to the grace period. And Mr. Bernard will even talk about that grace period and he'll backtrack. Watch, it's coming here. It's coming because because something about it just seems wrong to him because he's, he's you know, I think something's going on here. It's, it's hard to lie and tell the truth and, 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 and mix those things. And, and, and somehow, some way, God somehow brings it out and kind of kind of exposes them. And, and I think it's interesting. And you'll see that coming up here. But just, just, just check this out. But see, Jesus taught in the synagogues. Did he approve synagogues? No, he didn't. He had not many, I don't even know of anything that he had good to say about the synagogues and those in it. He went there to, to talk because there was people there. He did not approve a church building. Nowhere in the scripture will you see where Jesus approved a church building. As a matter of fact, when he did talk about a building, when, when, when the disciples said, look at, look at the great buildings, Jesus told them right off, not one stone is going to be left above on another. Yes, was he prophesying physically? Yes. But he was also, he said, my church, the gates of hell will not prevail against it. He was not talking about a physical church because if Jesus was talking about a physical church, those gates of hell today, there would be a church in Jerusalem right now under the name of Jesus Christ. It would have never ceased because the gates of hell would never be able to tumble it. But that wasn't what he was talking about. And not many people uh, in, in any theology will, will tell you that he was talking about a physical church. And, and so when you look at those things, they twist it. They twist the scriptures to, to get you to, to believe these things. And they feel like if they say it enough, and it's just like the news, if they say it enough, you'll start believing it. And, you know, you, these folks, uh, the subservient to those men will, will constantly keep reiterating those same lies that they tell. Let's go on. More important, you're neglecting justice and mercy. And so he's saying, if you're so meticulous of even least detail, how much more should you be meticulous in the bigger moral he issues? Wasn't, he wasn't but approving. Interestingly, he was not Jesus approving. did not say paying tithes is wrong or legalistic. He's saying, you pay tithes to the nth degree. I commend you for that. You should do that. But they're much bigger things. Then if you read... Notice how he emphasizes the tithe. The emphasis of this whole conversation had nothing to do with tithes. Had nothing to do with tithes. He was just making a point. And in the point that he was making was that they had no compassion. They took advantage of people. They put heavy burdens. Oh, as Mr. Bernard would say in many other speakings and, 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 and thoughts, he would say, oh, you've got to back up and look at the whole context. Oh, 
don't ask me. You go look at some of his other stuff. Listen to some of his other stuff. He will back way out and say, oh, no, context. But when it fits his purpose, he will just get right down to the detail. And nobody's supposed to back up and look at anything else because Jesus was only talking about ties here because that's the topic he wants you to believe. This is where he wants to bring money. He wants to be that benefactor. That organization must be that benefactor. So this man is lying to you. He is being disingenuous, as they say it, in a polite manner of saying, you're going to lie and you're going to go to hell. So here we go. Let's talk a little bit. Let's let him let him dig himself a little deeper here. Corinthians chapter 8, 1 first, first Corinthians chapter 9. And there are other passages, but the Apostle Paul goes to great length to talk about we should support the church. We should support needy Christians. We should support preachers. Those who, who preach the gospel have a right to live of the gospel. They have a right to be supported. Okay, <laughs> now he's talking about rights. I have a right. Where does Jesus say anything about anyone ever having a right to anything material on this earth? Can you match me something up? Can you match one thing that Jesus said or ever meant? Meant to say, or even the spirit of flow of where he said that you would gain I'm pretty sure he said you would be hated of all men for my name's sake. Many of you would be put to death. What happened to all the disciples? Except for John, most of them suffered a martyrdom. They were martyrs for Jesus' name. Nobody growed a big mansion. No one fared well in the end. Their heads were chopped off. Peter, they were sliced in half. And Jesus even told them, these are the things that are going to happen to those. He said, if you love the world or the things in the world, the love of the Father is not in you. But this man is twisting the scripture saying, hey, we got to take good care, especially those of the household of faith. And this is what the Lord meant. No, he didn't mean any of that. He did not mean any of that. And, 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 the, and if you're going to give, it's by giving, not by constraint, the New Testament scripture says. I don't hear him saying that one because it doesn't fit his narrative to lie about tithing. Tithing never jumped into grace. None of the old law jumped into grace. And people say, oh, the Ten Commandments. Well, let me tell you something. I go to a couple scriptures and show you 26 commandments that way outdo in strictness the Ten Commandments. Jesus said, no longer do you have to be caught in the act of adultery, but if you think of a woman, if you think of adultery in your mind, you have sinned. So let me tell you about the Ten Commandments. They are old, amen. Acts 15, amen. Peter said that, that the law, that we, nor our fathers, was able to do it. And, and, and so you go read your scripture because this man is a liar. He is lying on this. We have proof right here in video. Well, how is that gonna happen? If our preachers and our pastors particularly should be supported by the gospel work, how, how do we do that? Well, the New Testament doesn't give any new method. Oh, so since it doesn't give any new method, it couldn't be that it's abolished with the old law, right? Now, that, that's not an option for Mr. Bernard because it doesn't fit his narrative. And you watch. He's going to just bring it right on over himself. I, I feel that he tithing feels. is still that method. Now, I will say this. We're not under the law. We're under grace. Here we go. He feels that tithing is that method. Well, we're going we're gonna to get on Mr. Bernard's feelings now, okay? Let's... Let's go by Mr. Bernard's feelings, right? Can we just go by Mr. Bernard's feelings now? Can we get salvation out of Mr. Bernard's feelings? He feels it. Well, let's just do it because he feels it. Must be right, yeah? Okay, and here he goes. Here, here. oh, a little bit of truth comes out here, but you got to bring in some truth so people will, will still listen to you, okay? So let's back up just a hair and listen to this little well, the New Testament doesn't give any new method. 
So I, I feel that tithing is still that method. Now, I will say this. We're not under the law. We're under grace. Whoa. And now you're getting some truth out. Now, now he's getting some truth out. We're not under the law. We're under grace. Here we go. I don't say that all the detailed um, instructions that you might find in the law of Moses. Okay, here we go. Remember, you know, man, I've heard this preached for for. 20 plus years, okay? You don't get to pick the things you want to choose out of the Bible. But here, Mr. Bernard's going to, by, by example, show you you can pick it. So here he goes. Uh, regarding tithing, would necessarily tithing, first fruits, offerings. I don't think we're bound by those specific regulations. And I wouldn't say, well, if you don't do this, you're going to hell. Or if you miscalculate your tithes, you're going to hell. Or you didn't pay tithes on the mint in your garden, you're going to hell. Let's get away from that legalistic orientation. So I don't really want to go to that topic because, you know, I, I can't I can't say you're going to go to hell because you don't have any scripture for any of it, really. That's why you can't say it. But but let's let's get away from that. Let's get away from what God says and what what we can prove in God's word. Let's get away from that for a minute. Now now watch how he just diverts right over to man and his own beneficial surmisings. But let's go from the opposite side. We know God wants us to give, and First Corinthians eight, First Corinthians nine, other passages talk about giving generously. Twisting the scripture. Let's see if he talks about don't give by constraint because if you got to pay your tithes, that is definitely law and that is constraint. If you're under the law, you are constrained to do it. So, so let's 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 continue to hear him lie and talk. You know, man's philosophy here. This is man's philosophy. Exactly what the Bible says. Don't listen to giving as God enables you. A giving according to your ability. So if you give according to your ability, I can get behind that. You can give, but you're not paying tithes. I can give to something that is needful, that someone has a need because the Bible tells us to love our brother as ourself, right? And, and, and these, these are things that Jesus taught us, love one another, right? So if I see someone in need and if I have the means to give, then I should give, right? Well, that's still up to me whether I choose to or not. But you would think that if I had a, a loving heart that God gave me, I would probably want to do that. So, But that's still my choice. And I would only give if I had it to give. I wouldn't, would not pay something else unless I felt the Holy Ghost tell me to do it. Then I could trust in that. But I would be sure. Well, that indicates it should be tied to your income in some way. Now, what's going to be fair for everyone? An absolute dollar amount would be ridiculously small for very successful people, but uh, unbearably large for people who are struggling. So just by looking at the principles of the New Testament, we should give generously. We should give according to how God has blessed us. So let's, let's, let's figure out salvation just, just by looking at the principles. Isn't that why we have 45,000 denominations today? It's because just by the principles, my principle is not always going to be your principle. My main concern isn't going to be your main concern. So let's just all figure it out on our own. Forget if the Bible says it or not. Let's just assume that, hey, well, I think it would just come on over. Well, let's just preach it. Yeah, as an organization, that's what UPCI decided to do. They decided to make you do it. Uh, we should invest in God's kingdom. We should support God's kingdom, even if it causes sacrifice. Well, when you put all that together, what, what are we talking about? Mm. And you say, well, what would God consider fair? Do you want to give the, the minimum God would really expect? I mean, let's say there is no specified amount. Well, under the law, everybody could give the minimum. There was never a problem with giving the minimum. It just had to be what God asked for. Now, who's who's given more than what they need to? I don't ever read anything that people have that they give more than what they was, was, was required to give. It's the law. Do you want to give so little that God thinks you're stingy? Huh? Whoa, 
Whoa, here we go. Here, here's, here's that bleed over for man and their benefit, okay? If you, God, thinks you're stingy? Wow. Do you want to give so little? Do you do you want to just give ten dollars in the offering plate when you could give a hundred dollars to that pastor and and help him pay an extra car payment? Do do you want to just you know God needs that? Is that is that all you're going to do for God? Really? These are fake wolves in sheep's clothing. This is as evil as it gets in this generation, and people think this man is great. I think so. He, he says give generously. So how do you know? How do we know what God thinks? Well, interesting that you ask. Under the Old Testament, the law was a schoolmaster to lead us to Christ. It was a t Whoa, very true there, Mr. David Bernard. But watch how he twist this. Now notice what he said, and he said it right. The law was a schoolmaster to lead us to where? Tithing? No. Uh, paying more money to a church that didn't ever exist in the New Testament at all? No, no, nothing set up like today existed back then. The most places they would go to was people's houses. And nobody, people gave as people had needs. They didn't pay somebody a salary. They didn't pay for electric they didn't pay for all this other baloney that these people are asking you to pay for. None of that. So here we go. The old law. Yes, Mr. Bernard, it was to bring us to Christ. And the Bible says the law, Jesus Christ, was the end of the law. It was to bring us to Christ so that it could all be reset and grace would come in through Jesus. The law came by Moses, which it could not take away sin. It could not do what it needed to do. So Jesus, God robed himself in flesh, came on his own, our behalf, amen, and, and, and he was that sacrifice. He paid the debt to remove sin once and for all. He died once and for all. He was that sacrifice. And yet, Mr. Bernard's about to tell you that the schoolmaster to bring us to Christ, and now what he's trying to do is pull over that old law back into the grace where Jesus said we now have a new. What does new mean? New and living way. A new and living way. See, this is the problem with these false teachers, these false people that have been able to skate so easily because of who they are. You see, all this stuff here is baloney that he is talking about. All this stuff is baloney. And, 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 but you know what? People don't want to believe it's baloney. Uh-uh, they do not want to believe it's baloney. But I'm going to show you here. Let me let me show you something here. Let's throw something right on over here right now. So what does this say? Acts 15. And this, and I'll just let's let's back it up just a hair. Okay? And and let's let's go to right here. You ready? Let's see there. And when there had been much disputing, now here's here's what was in question here question here in the book of Acts. It was all about the law. This is what was being in question. You see, this was all about the law. There was just this uproar that the Gentiles just received the Holy Ghost, and and you had these people that were of the sect of Pharisees that had become disciples. Now, they were converted. They were on the team of the knowledge of the disciples. They were there that day. They said, hey, listen, these guys got to get baptized and um, these guys have to get circumcised. And they have to abide by the law. And Peter rose up, the Bible says, in verse 7 here, right? 
Peter rose up and said unto them, Men and brethren, you know how that a good while ago God made choice among us that the Gentiles by my mouth should hear the word of the gospel and believe. You know what? Peter was right. By his mouth, not Paul's mouth, by the way. Verse 8, And God, which knoweth the hearts, bear them witness, giving them the Holy Ghost, even as he did unto us. Same way. Same way. God didn't have preference to us over the Gentiles. He gave them the Holy Ghost just like he did to us. And he put no difference between us and them, purifying their hearts by faith. Oh, but man wants to divide. Man wants to say there's a ministry and there's a lay people. No, here you go. This is God's word. Now, here you go. Here's what defines why uh, Mr. Bernard is a liar. Verse 10, Peter, remember the one that gave the salvation, the one that had the keys to the kingdom? This is Peter, that Peter. Now, therefore, why tempt ye God to put a yoke upon the neck of the disciples, talking about the Gentiles that just got the Holy Ghost, which neither our fathers nor we were able to bear? That's what Peter just said. Why are you going to put the law on these Gentiles, we couldn't even uh, 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 honor the law. We was no good at doing the law. We couldn't even do it. And here you go. You're trying to put it on them. Come on. Now let's 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 go down to, to verse 23. Let's go down to let's just. And they wrote letters by them after this manner. Now see, they went to the chief men, and they all congregated and they all said, you know, okay, well, here's, here's, here's what we feel the Holy Ghost wants us to say and do. So here we go. For as much, here's the letter, for as much as we have heard, went back to these Gentiles that these yahoos said, hey, you know, uh, you, you got to You got to do this. And then, and they're like all confused that did God not just give us the Holy Ghost? Okay, here we go. 24, for as much as we have heard that certain which went out from us have troubled you with these words. Here they are trying to tell you something that's not so. They're lying to you, subverting your souls, troubling you, making you feel like you're not even saved by God yet, even though you just had this awesome experience of receiving the Holy Ghost and the approval of God himself saying you must be circumcised and keep the law. Here's, here's, here's the kicker. Here you go, Mr. Bernard. You should read this. To whom we gave no such commandment. You are not under the law. Nothing came over from the law. When God gave grace, you were freed from the law. But you know what? Man does not want you free from the law. Man needs you under the law because that's the only way that they can still have control and power over you as a minister, as a pastor. Here we go. God said, well, I know you don't know what's fair, so I'm going to tell you what's fair. If everybody gives 10% of your increase, that'll be fair. That'll be fair for the rich, for the poor. Everybody can do that. If you don't have any income, you're not obligated, you know, and then you can give offerings in addition to that. So we... Now, I want to see where Mr. Bernard, that wasn't for everybody. That wasn't the law of Moses. Do you find tithing in the commandments, the Ten Commandments? Do you think if it wasn't important that God would have put it, that Moses would have put it in the Ten Commandments? He would have, but he didn't because it wasn't. And it was only for the Levite priesthood and, and very few others. And those that, that, that proclaimed that they did, like Abraham, they gave it of their own accord, not by a law or not by constraint. And, and when you look at, at, at Jacob, when, when he began to, when he gave the 10%, when he offered God the 10%, it was when Jacob... He had already heard from his fathers of, of those things. And he's the one that uh, negotiated with God himself. He's the one that said, well, Lord, if you do this, if you bring me to my brother and, and, and we can make peace and I don't get killed and all that stuff, read it for yourself, then I will give you, I will do 10%. I will do this. It had nothing to do with a law or const constraint. So these folks are such liars. They are lying for gain. And I'll tell you, that's about the worst thing you could be. That abolishes their 
whole uh, uh, reputation as far as I'm concerned. And I'll tell you what, you should not believe a liar like this. We know the answer to the question, what does God consider reasonable? What does God expect? What would be the minimum? Well, you already have the answer. So I don't look at the Old Testament as, or, or the law of Moses specifically as a legalistic uh, requirement for my salvation. I well, no, it's not for your salvation, but it was for their salvation in the old law if they were under the law. But since you're not under the law, you don't have to look for it as a, as a uh, salvation issue because you're not under the law. You're under grace. You said it yourself. You just don't understand how to tell people that without losing your game. Look at his teaching me and long before the law of Moses. We're children of Abraham. Both Jesus and Paul talked about children of Abraham and we're children of Abraham by faith. So even if I'm not. So let's try this, Mr. Bernard. Why don't you exercise some faith in your organization that God's going to just give you the money and not preach people giving you tithes? Why don't you go by that faith that Abraham went by? Because I guarantee you, he didn't start an organization. He did not start a charity. And that's why all you guys have got is a charity. And you're constraining people to give it. You're extorting people left and right. And it's going to be a hot fire hell for those of you who continue to do this. A Jew, and I don't follow the law of Moses. Aren't I supposed to follow the example of my father Abraham, who was the father of the faithful? So just based on the fact that Abraham... What is faithful? And go read Hebrews 11. Go read Hebrews 11, Mr. Bernard. I don't think you've read it in a while. Because the faithful exercised faith, not by coin. And no one, no one, only a few rare instances where it's anything monetary, money. And let me tell you right now, you know who's, you know why God's blessing this country? Because we're, we've all paid tithes. You know how we paid tithes? We, we haven't paid it by, we, we paid it through the government. God has already taken care of any of that stuff. He's not constrained a Christian to give money at all. If there's a person in need, how dwelleth the love of God in you if you if you don't help them? That's what the book of James says. That's that's what 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 is what it's all about. It's about just helping people. But you know what? When you pay taxes, guess what? We have social security people pay into when they get old and can't work. Guess what? They get a check. You know what? Those that are that are less fortunate, those that 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 can't support themselves, those that are that are uh, disabled, and and those that are just just down on their luck. Guess what? We have a government that they can go get uh, uh, EBT cards. They can get uh, food provisions. There are there are places that they can go get food, and 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 people like you and I. We'll just, if we see a need, we want to give if we have it. So so we don't have no constraint of paying tithes. This is all an organization. This is all about religion and building their man's kingdom for their, their lapels, just like Jesus said in, in, in chapter 23 of Matthew and, and, and oh, how they like to enlarge their borders. They like to put the insignia, how great they are and how, how they've led this. And oh, I've we've preached to 5,000 over here in Africa. And we went over here and we did that. It's all about them. It has nothing to do about Jesus. And, and when they talk about these four ambitions and how all these things, you know, Jesus can raise people up from where they are. I guess if you believe Paul's conversion, nobody went to Paul. Nobody went to see Paul and, and preach to him. Jesus himself just talked to him, right? So if you believe that, then why can't you believe it for Africa? Why can't you believe it for, for, for Cuba? Why can't you believe it for the uttermost parts of the earth? We have, uh, I'm, I'm speaking to many of you that I couldn't meet in a coffee shop. But you see, these folks want to do it for gain because they get offerings. They get, this is, this is how they generate a bunch of money. Because they say, oh, yeah, well, you know, give, give, you know, you're doing the work for the Lord. Yeah, put it in our, in, in these coffers so we can, we can go out there and spread the gospel. That's what you're doing. You're helping the Lord. God don't need your help with your money, with your 10%. God didn't ask for 10%. 
That 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 right there is 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 hypo hypocrisy. Did it uh, before the law? Jacob did it before the law. Moses did it under the law. Jesus commended it in his earth. Jesus did not commend it ministry. Paul said, "You've got to be generous, even after the law." Boy, he's reaching in. Well, is generous giving even less than what was required of the law? I heard. It's giving to every, of, of according to your severability. Look at the talents. Why don't you read the parable of the talents, Mr. Bernard? That will answer your question. And I know you're lying about it. All right, I can't give any more of this stuff with this guy. Uh, but I just wanted to come on here and show you how they lie. And, and, and there are so many other things. I've listened to some other things. And, and, and since the Lord has opened my eyes with, with so many of these things, that that this this organization, I'm telling you, my friend, is 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 very wicked. Wicked in the fact that you know every every religion has some things that they got right about the Bible, about Jesus, what he said. Every one of them has something that they got right. But you know what? That doesn't make them all right. And that's the same way with UPCI. They put all the power under a minister, under a, a pastor, and you cannot be, you cannot be saved. And then there's one on here talking about, do I need a pastor? And he lies about that too. He's got no biblical backing on that. And, and you know what? By the same standard of the canon to get books in the Bible, the 66 books that's in the in the bounds of, of what we call the Bible today. These doctrines, these teachings, these heresies, these lies could not hold up to be put in the Bible on their own. These would not even hold up. So I'm telling you, my friend, be careful. Find the Holy Ghost. Seek God. Let God be true. And these men a liar that they are. In Jesus' name, amen.